Welcome back, this is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're going to talk about autoimmune disease. How prevalent is it? What are the different stages of autoimmune disease? And how do we figure out if we actually have autoimmune disease? So let's get right into it. Autoimmune disease. In 2019, it was estimated that 1 out of 12 women has an autoimmune condition. 1 out of 24 men has autoimmune disease. National Institute of Health estimates 23.5 million Americans have one of the autoimmune diseases. American Autoimmune Related Disorder Association estimates 50 million Americans have autoimmune disease. My guess is that it's probably even higher than that. Likely one out of five uh, uh, Americans probably have autoimmune disease. Okay. Now, what is autoimmune disease? There's greater than 80 different autoimmune diseases that are identified at this time. You have lupus, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, Crohn's disease, irritable bowel uh, disease, or uh, inflammatory bowel disease, celiac disease, pernicious anemia, right? There's a lot of them, diabetes, MS. So there's a multitude of these autoimmune processes that go on and it's hard for people to figure out what's going on with them when they first develop it. So let's get right into the different stages. So autoimmune disease. During stage one, it's called silent autoimmunity. This is when you may have a positive test for a antibody to a tissue. For example, if you have thyroid issues, you may have a positive TPO or TG antibody, but you do not exhibit any symptoms. So you have an elevated an uh, antibody, but you have no symptoms or no noticeable tissue loss. There's no impact on the thyroid itself, okay? When you have stage two autoimmune reactivity, you have elevated antibodies. So in, we're gonna use the example of thyroid. You have an elevated TPO or TG antibody but you have some symptoms. Symptoms like hair loss, dry skin, loss of one third or a lateral one third of the eyebrow, right? Constipation, fatigue. So you have some noticeable symptoms, but you don't have any tissue loss. The thyroid is still intact, okay? But you're, you're exhibiting overt symptoms. Stage three autoimmune disease is elevated antibodies with symptoms, like with a thyroid, all those symptoms, plus tissue loss. So you might have inflammation of the thyroid, noticeable, you can see it. Uh, when they do an ultrasound, you can see thyroiditis or inflammation of the thyroid. So these are different ways you can identify uh, the early stages and then identify the late stages. Now, if you have family history, a strong family history of autoimmune disease, you should get checked for that particular autoimmune disease, okay? A good screening test when you just come in and you're not sure. You come in and I go, I have an autoimmune disease, or I think I might have an autoimmune disease, but we don't know which one it is and what to do about it, right? So one thing you can do is check something called ANA, anti-nuclear antibody or antigen, right? Anti-nuclear antibody. So you can check that. It doesn't give you a specific diagnosis of an autoimmune disease, but if this is elevated, it gives you an idea that there might be something lurking. So you can be sent to a rheumatologist and they can run a bunch of different tests based on family history and symptoms if you have any and determine if you have an autoimmune process going on, right? Now, you can do individual testing. So if your mom or grandma or someone had a thyroid problem or rheumatoid arthritis, you can run specific antibodies for that condition, okay? So in the silent autoimmune stages, you're just kind of finding out that you have an antibody but no symptoms. Now, when people come into my office, right, we look for triggers for autoimmunity. What triggered this autoimmune condition? It can be a variety of different things, okay? Usually, uh, when young girls start to have their first menstruation, it changes hormonal um, fluctuations and it can trigger an autoimmune disease. Also, when women go from being pregnant to giving birth, it can also 
uh, trigger autoimmune disease. Another one is when you go into menopause and you have a drop in hormones. So this hormonal fluctuations can be a trigger for an autoimmune condition. Also, stress or traumatic stress, post-traumatic stress uh, can be impacting autoimmune processes. Lack of sleep, food proteins, gluten, dairy, soy, nightshades, lectins, different types of food proteins can also be a trigger for autoimmune disease because these foods are, a lot of them are uh, GMO or uh, hybridized, use a lot of glyphosates and chemicals and pesticides that laden the entire product can be another trigger for autoimmune disease. You being sick with like a specific condition and you went somewhere and you had uh, issues with your bowel and you had giardia or something can also trigger autoimmune disease. Things like chemicals, um, pollutants can also trigger autoimmune disease. Uh, plastics, BPA, can also trigger autoimmune disease. Uh, exogenous hormones can also do it. So there's a lot of different triggers that can uh, trigger autoimmune disease. You just need to figure out which one it is. Or sometimes it's just about cleaning things up, right? Cleaning up your environment, reducing EMF exposures from cell phones, well, uh, cell phone towers, Wi-Fi, etc clean eating, like an autoimmune paleo diet. You can do a lot of different things to help yourself uh, in terms of uh, reducing the inflammatory response due to autoimmune disease. Now, if you have an autoimmune disease, let's say you have rheumatoid arthritis, is that a curable disease? Probably not. What I'm going to say is that you can put it into remission meaning you can do all the lifestyle changes, uh, remove all the different triggers, uh, sleep well, eat well, etc., and you can push an autoimmune disease into remission. However, if you get back into your bad habits and do all the things that you know, got you to the point of autoimmunity, then it can come back. So I would say for most people who have autoimmune disease, you are a recovering autoimmune patient not a patient who is uh, completely rid of autoimmune disease. So you always have to be kind of conscious uh, of what you're doing and eating and, and, and so forth, right? So testing wise, you can do that. Um, there's another uh, company called Cyrex Labs, okay? It's uh, Cyrex Labs, okay? Now, this lab, will do what we call predictive antibodies. They can screen for a multitude of different autoimmune conditions in one test. It's a great test to do because if you suspect that you have autoimmune disease, you can do this test and run a whole bunch of different antibodies and make it reasonably uh, priced because uh, if you do individual ones through a regular lab, the price gets exorbitant, so it, it just gets out of hand. So you can, do, uh, you can go to cyrexlabs.com and you can check uh, and look at some of Dr. Vijdani's work. Um, a lot of this stuff information that I do give you um, is coming from Dr. Uh, Karazian. Um, I studied under him and I've taken all his courses. So there's a lot of really good information out there uh, regarding autoimmune disease. At the end of the day, you have to clean up your environment, your food, your sleep, stress, etc., and then push things into autoimmune remission. Right? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.